Curious George Discovers a Rainbow. And if you'd like to buy this book, check out the link in the description down below. George was a good little monkey and always very curious. Sometimes curiosity gets a good little monkey lost in the woods, especially when he's chasing leprechauns. Would you believe that that's how George discovered the rainbow? And it all started on a bright sunny day. It was a beautiful day in the country. Steve and Betsy were visiting from the city for the first time. George couldn't wait for their outdoor adventure to begin. But first they had to unpack. When Betsy dropped her books, George rushed to help her pick them up. That's when he saw something he had never seen before. Something amazing. That's a rainbow, George, said Betsy. See the pot of gold at the end? And the leprechaun? Rainbows are always the same, seven colours. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Rainbows are created by the sun and the rain, Betsy explained. But I can make a rainbow without either. Wanna see? A rainbow inside? George could hardly wait. Betsy used scissors to cut a slit in the centre of a sheet of paper. Then she taped the paper over a flashlight and shined the light through a fishbowl full of water. The flashlight is like a sunbeam and the water is like a giant raindrop. The light shines through the water and behold, Betsy said proudly, a rainbow. George thought Betsy's rainbow was nice, but there was no leprechaun or pot of gold. George wondered if he would huh? ever see a real rainbow that spanned the whole sky. Have you? He looked out of the window. White fluffy clouds floated by. Looks like a nice day, said the man in the yellow hat. Meanwhile, the man helped Steve prepare for a hike. Have you ever seen any wild animals? Steve asked. We've got skunks and deer. I've even seen a moose or two, the man replied. A moose? Steve said. Now there's something you don't see in the city. At last, it was time for their hike. Outside, the sun was shining, but the temperature was cooler and more clouds were rolling in. I'm driving into town to get food for dinner, said the man. Just then, thunder grumbled low in the distance. If it rains, head home, he added. George knows the way. George led them into the forest. I'm not leaving without a picture of moose, Steve said. Just then, he felt a raindrop. Oh no, not rain. Do we have to go back already? I don't think so, Betsy said. It's probably going to stop soon. Look, the sun is already peeking through the clouds. Sunlight and rain at the same time. George ran off in search of the rainbow's end with Chalky close behind. Chalky, George, wait! Betsy yelled, chasing them through the rain. When Betsy finally caught up with them, George tried to explain that he had wanted to reach a pot of gold. But no matter how far or fast he and Chalky ran, the rainbow only got farther away. The leprechaun with a pot of gold is just a fairy tale, said Betsy. But I guess it couldn't hurt to look just in case, could it, Steve? But Steve was nowhere in sight. He'll catch up with us, said Betsy. Let's keep going. They hadn't gone far when something small and green hopped through the bushes. Could it be the leprechaun? George thought. He must be getting close to the pot of gold now. But it was only a green frog. Usually George would be happy to meet a frog, but it was no leprechaun. George wasn't disappointed for long though, because the frog had led him to the second rainbow. Sorry George, Betsy said. That's not another rainbow. It's only the reflection of the rainbow in the water. How will we keep chasing the rainbow now? We need to cross the river. Just then, Chucky darted through the bushes after the frog and found what they needed most, a boat. Uh-oh. Betsy said as they floated away. How will Steve ever catch up with us now? Meanwhile, Steve realized he was all alone. Sharky, Betsy, George, where are you? He called. Suddenly something moved in the bushes. What do you think it was? A moose! Steve shouted, snapping a picture. But the moose didn't like Steve's loud voice or his camera. Steve was scared. He was about to call for help when he heard a voice. Back away from the moose slowly, the boy said. It was George's friend, Bill. He knew a lot about the wilderness, and whatever you do, don't frighten it, Bill added. The moose walked off into the forest. When the coast was clear, Bill introduced himself. I'm Bill, and you're lucky I found you. Moose can be dangerous. Hey, I'm 
I'm Steve, he said to Bill. Since you're so good at finding things, maybe you can help me find my sister and our friend George. I know George, Bill said. Follow me. I saw his friend in town. He'll help us. Steve, said the man. Where are Betsy, Chalky and George? We got separated in the woods, Steve said. I don't know where they went. Just then, something sparkly caught his eye. More rainbows. Oh yeah, Steve remembered. George saw a rainbow right before they ran off. If I know George, I bet he went to find a goal at the end of the rainbow. I have an idea to help him to get home, the man said. When George, Betsy and Charlie reached the shore, daylight was fading and so was a rainbow. George knew they needed to get home before dark. There was only one problem. He didn't know where they were anymore. Suddenly, Chucky began to bark. Something was glowing from the end of the rainbow. It must be their pot of gold. George, Betsy and Chucky raced towards the light. George, over here, called the man with the yellow balloon. He was standing on the roof of the house holding a bright shiny balloon that was wearing a very similar yellow hat. George was happy to be home with his friends. There was no pot of gold, but he knew he had found a real treasure at the end of the rainbow. The end.